listening to a band of gamers podcasting since 2012. Three older best mates share a few laughs and keep you current with discussions about the latest news, consoles, and games. Join the conversation and the community, abandofgamers.com. Welcome back. ABOG, a band of gamers. How's it going? Podcast. I'm Joel, your MC, one of your three co-hosts, recording in Brookfield, Wisconsin, where it's sub-zero temperatures. So I've got my stout ready, stout season. Joining me on this podcast journey, first of all, from Birmingham, England, live from the atrium, it's Carl. Hey, Carl. Yes. Hello, hello. Yeah, I haven't got a stout. I I, I think I should have continued stout season, because I also have minus degrees here. We've had a super cold spell in England. It's been brutal we've had lovely snow but yeah it's it's been super cold i'm looking forward to the temperature just creeping up you know creeping up into those uh, maybe double digits next week and from vancouver canada a tendy terrorizer it's shane it's happening shane oh you know happening things be happening also sub-zero no well not quite it actually snowed here on the west coast and it actually stuck to the ground and it has stayed for longer than a couple hours. So we're, uh, we're in snowmageddon, I guess. I love it. You know, not, not <laughs> cool enough to get out onto the pond yet, but uh, yeah. Yeah, we're doing good, man. We're doing good. I've got a nice long driveway. And as you throw the snow off or you shovel it, you kind of pile it up on the side, right? Get it out of the way. That pile on either side of my driveway is about seven feet tall what that's how much snow we have it's absolutely ridiculous we don't have seven feet on the ground on the ground there's maybe let's say 18 inches two feet maybe total i'm guessing but on the sides of my driveways my driveway i don't have multiple houses sorry it's seven eight feet all the way down the length of the driveway so now when i shovel it's like i have to throw it like way high in the air to get it up over the top of this mound it's it's (laughs) and uh, i just saw that in the uh, the weather forecast two to four more inches tomorrow night I'm like where am i supposed to go with this it's ridiculous yeah, you need a little step stool or something to get it it's ridiculous yeah. you need one of those fancy snow blowers you know you can just blow it all out into the road or whatever just get it off your drive or oh. blow it onto your neighbor's drive blow it out onto the road i've got yeah, one i've really? got one of those i've got i got a snow blower <laughs> it's a good exercise man i like i like shoveling you know yeah that doesn't surprise you guys does it got a nice snow blower and i'm out there with a shovel taking like an hour and a half yeah. and shoveling it at a boy in the old days, in the cellophane, like you know, <laughs> you'd make your own shovel out of like a piece of plywood and like an old hockey stick and nail it to it, and that's what we would shovel as kids. Nice. <laughs> then we make speed bumps in the road and go bumper skiing. I was so excited to get started here that I skipped over the uh, the teasers. What we got in this episode? I had to say Carl and Shane. I had to start yakking with these two guys. But hey, let's let's quickly reveal what's in this episode and get right to it. In this episode, Google already worrying their Stadia faithful. Ooh, Shane, that was your line. Xbox right. gamers will finally get a chance to play a proper MLB game this spring. What? NCAA college football is coming back, but is it? Mass Effect remaster. Kind of? Not really? New Mass yeah. Effects. Who bought Gearbox? Is it Microsoft again? Or somebody else. You're getting a great deal on your PS5. Lots of video games coming to your screens, but you won't be playing any of these. CD Projekt Red is, was beaten at their own game. And then we've got impressions from Shane and Carl for Destruction All-Stars. There you go. Nice. Jam-packed. Yeah. Very packed. Looks like video game news season is in, is in effect. It's not quiet yeah. anymore. A lot going on. Well, first of all, Google Stadia shutting down their first party operations. So you may recall, if you're... If you're uh, into all the minutia like we are, or maybe you heard about it here. But when Google Stadia was announced, they talked about their first party studios and how they were going to have exclusive games. And they had all sorts of big shots up on stage. Phil Harrison, ex Sony exec, up there telling you about it. Amy Henny? Is that her name? Henning? Yep. Heading up that first party studio, huge name in video game industry. And here they've already shut it down. Google Stadia, what, a year old? How old is that thing? Less than a year? Sounds about right, yeah. Yeah, but probably around 12 months or so. Shock, shocking that this has happened, right? Yeah. Exactly. Google turning their back on one of their services. Yeah, that's a big surprise. Mm. 
I do feel sorry, like because they've they've recruited a load of loaded of developers to work on games and stuff, and you know these people have left other jobs and then to kind of just chuck it away. Like it, it's a bit disappointing. Yeah, I wonder how much work has gone into these games that they've just thrown away, or if those IPs, or if all that work could be sold to somebody else and then started. I wonder what happens to that. You know, if you're like making, if you're knitting a blanket and you're halfway done, can't you just give it to your grandma and have her finish it? Or are you just going to throw it in the garbage? Well, it'd be a scarf, wouldn't it? Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, good point. Google scarfs. <laughs> you Google, Google Stadia is just, I mean, it was basically a, what, an, an Ubisoft streaming service, really. It seems like every game that's, they kind of advertise it's all Ubisoft stuff. But yeah, I guess, yeah, too bad. Well, it's going to be all third party stuff now. No, no first party. So what's going to happen with Google Stadia? They're just going to keep going on with all the third-party games? Should the Google Stadia users and supporters and people who really love it be worried that maybe they'll shut down the third-party support at some point? Or do you guys think that Google Stadia is here to stay? It's just not going to have any first-party games. It's inevitable it'll shut down. Yep. It's, it's limping. It, it never really learned to walk. And, and it doesn't look, not looking good for him. Yeah, I I agree with Shane. Like it's it's Thank if they can't make and if they can't make it work, like if you know with Google and them would it be on it? Maybe the future isn't all digital. Ooh, interesting. A friend of mine on Facebook, local guy here, he was telling me that Cyberpunk was running the best on Google Stadia. He was making an argument that that was the version to get because at first, mm-hmm. obviously, the console versions were having a lot of problems. Not everybody has a super high-end PC to be able to play that game. So if you're kind of in the middle there, you don't have a great PC, the Google Stadia version was the version to play. It was running better than the console versions, is what he was telling me. It kind of makes sense, yeah. I could see that. Yeah, definitely. It's completely, completely, you're basically playing the best build on a PC that you could be when you're streaming it. So, yeah, it, it, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? You know, it's, it took a game... That uh, had all these issues, and then like, oh yeah, we're we're doing it best, and then yeah, we're also kind of dying a slow death. But it is what it is, you know. Kind of sent out there to die, and there's only so long it'll get on there with a third party uh, base anyway. It would make me a little worried to be spending money on games there because you are paying full price for a lot of those games on a service that who knows what'll happen with it. I I had that same problem earlier today. Actually, I, I bought on the Nintendo Switch Pikmin Three. Big, big fan of Pikmin. Remember, I have the uh, New Year's resolution to only go dig- only buy digital. I'm sticking to it. I bought Pikmin 3, and then as soon as I bought it, I stopped for a second and said, I realized, shit, is, that ga- is Nintendo at a point now where all of their games are going to be compatible with their future systems like Xbox and PlayStation? Or when they come out with whatever replaces the Switch, not the Pro, or whatever replaces it, am I going to have to buy this shit again? Am I going to lose that content? I was wor- I'm worried about that because I don't. Nintendo hasn't proven. I don't think they've even said, have they, that everything out in the future mm-hmm. is going to be on your console with the license you use to buy it on the Switch. No, they haven't ah. said anything about it. So you've got no. <laughs> yeah, you've Looks got like no Joel's had a, He's a bit of a crossroads there, buddy. Yeah. Uh, oh, I didn't expect this six weeks into the year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sticking to it. Out of boy. MLB The Show 21 was announced for PlayStation 5, PlayStation 4, of course, right? But it's also coming to the Xbox. Now, we knew this might be happening because they, they, did, they did say, was it eight months ago, a year ago, maybe eight months ago, that they were, were going to start coming out on other consoles? But never, never. It was actually, I think a couple of years ago, was they it? even said, I think it was prior to 20 coming out, they had mentioned... Yeah, it's going to be on both. Not this one, but starting uh, with 21. So it's, uh, yes, for, you know, a little info for the, for, the, for the kids here. You know, it's been, it's been a while. It's been a long time coming. Coming out on April 20th. It's on PS4, Xbox One, PS5, Xbox Series S and X for $10 more. You're paying the, you're paying the $10 premium to get the better version. Or you can buy the... Jackie Robinson edition, which is a couple more dollars yet even, which will have both. So if you maybe upgrade to a PS5 in the future, you would then have that additional content there and ready. 
but they comes with a bunch of stuff and I yeah don't, i don't know i just i'm not really personally i'm not interested in all that crap but uh bunch of uh stubs for diamond dynasty you get you know a couple packs every week or whatnot all that jazz that yeah good stuff Shane, you buy an MLB 21, MLB The Show 21? You buy that every year, right? It's like your NHL. Don't you pick that up every year? It feels like I buy it every year, doesn't it? Yeah. I think so. Yeah, I usually do. I'll probably, we'll see if this one comes down, you know, a couple months after it comes out. But I'm looking forward to this one. I think it'll, you know, it's, it'll, it'll look great on the, uh, the shiny new console. I wonder. Yeah, she will. I wonder if it'll, are, have they done anything to it? to really make it worth the extra 10 bucks on the new console or is it just going to be a more optimally running that same engine same graphics that we've been accustomed to for many years now on that game well i mean it's got a i mean if fifa is any indication i mean it's got to look better and you know be a little tighter and whatnot but you know it's there just you gotta shoehorn that uh that premium price point in somehow and it's a it's the way to do it you know Games have been the same price for, what, 30 years? You know, and the industry's only gotten bigger and bigger. It costs more to develop. There's a lot more involved. Prices are going up. It's 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 happening right before eyes. And, you know, we've, uh, like I said, we've been paying the same price for a long time. Yeah, 10, you know? 10, 15 years. When did they first go up? Was it PS3, Xbox 360s when they hit $60? Yeah, there was a jump there. Was, well, I remember even like Super Nintendo games, you know, like the AAA titles came out and they were fifty nine ninety nine. Oh yeah. You know, it's, yep. I did Strider on the Genesis and there's plenty of, exa- Street Fighter, I think on, on yep. Super Street Nintendo Fighter. was a premium price because it had extra. Eight characters. Extra, extra, something in the cartridge, <laughs> something extra. <laughs> That's your technical yeah, explanation so. there. Cross-platform play between PlayStation and Xbox on MLB, MLB The Show Whoa. 21. That's pretty cool. That's awesome. And then we've sure. got we've got more sports news. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> more more in sports. EA announced that their NCAA college football is coming back. What? Right? Yeah, but they don't have the rights to the teams, and they won't be using any of the players' likenesses, obviously, which they've never done because that's just correct. The, the college players are amateurs, or they're not. They don't get paid, even though I think they should. But that's a different conversation. Hundred percent. But they do have they do have agreements with some of the conferences, I believe. So some of the teams from some of the conferences apparently will be in the game, whereas not all, and they're, my buddy was telling me they're trying to get all the, they're going to keep trying to buy up more of the conference deals, and then therefore, yeah. so who knows how many teams or what will be represented, or if they'll do, just do like, you know, here's the Florida Crocodiles instead of the Florida Gators, yeah. and, you know, just do what, like <laughs> weird, weird versions of those teams. I actually fired up uh, the last iteration, uh, NCAA 14. I believe it was, which is a fantastic game of football. And you can still go on there and download. People still update the rosters, man. And you can download them, man. This is something EA's got to implement in in all their sports titles, I believe. You know, the ability, you know, user-created rosters and be able to download them. You know, do that for Madden. Imagine that for Madden for, you know, some classic, you know, football teams, all the great teams over the years and whatnot. And, you know, you, you uh, NHL, you know, have like, you know, the Oilers from the eighties and whatnot, you know, mind you, it would kind of go against, uh, they're all, they're what they've been doing with adding some of the old guys in, uh, in their pay to play, I guess we'll, we'll call it It's a bit of a scam, but whatever, it's a different topic for a different discussion. Um, but yeah, that's, that was a re- one really cool thing I liked about the NCAA football game is just, you know, that is, it's cool to, you know, download some rosters and whatnot. You know, user created stuff's really cool. Yeah, haven't they since turned that off? So you can't just for Madden get the new updated roster by having your friend or somebody across the world do all the work and then just download it to a card. And I think that was mm-hmm. a. I believe that feature is no longer available. Oh, is I was it able to download it on NCAA? <laughs> I went on, went into a forum, and they showed you exactly how to do it and whatnot. And I was like, cool. No, I know so my my buddy does the same thing, but I mean with oh, like sorry. the with the later games, like like your NHL. Mm. Can you take your NHL and go download uh, nah. custom rosters now? No, nah. not at all. It's just the ones that uh, EA posts in there that you can go in and download. That's it. Yeah, 
for shame. That'd be nice, though. Let's Agreed. Mass Effect. This is Carl's territory. Yeah. Yes, it's long been rumored that they were doing a, a, a remaster of the games, and we would be getting them at some point. It's kind of been leaked a couple of times, but it's, it's finally been confirmed that uh, all the three games will be bundled together in a uh, in a remaster, definitive edition, whatever you want to call it, and it's coming out on the 14th of May. Um, as remasters go, it's kind of just a bit of a lick of paint. You know, like they, they, they keep showing comparisons, um, you know, with, with the old footage and the new footage, and they're like, you know, here we go, like, look how different it is. Uh, I don't, it doesn't really amaze me or blow me away, to be honest. I, I do need to play through, I've, I've done Mass Effect 1 on the, I think I played through that twice actually on the PlayStation and the Xbox, and I've still got the other two in my backlog. I own them both uh, on different formats already. Um, the remaster, I was, I was looking at it, I was like, oh man, yeah, I might pick this up. Um, but I think it's a full price game, sort of 55 quid over here. Um, not sure it warrants it from what I've seen. And um, you can also buy a collector's edition, like a super collector's edition, which doesn't come with the game, but a replica helmet for like $180 or something stupid. So if you want to go completely nuts and, and buy a collector's edition with no game, you can do that. Crazy. I'm shaking my head over here. That sounds really yep. ridiculous for a, mm. for a helmet. But you know, people will, people will do that. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I am t- I am toying with picking it up because I've been quite good. I haven't really bought any of the games. I've got a couple coming at pre-ordered, but um, I'm looking at this going. Well, actually, does it count as a backlog? Like, if I buy the re- you know this this remastered edition and play, you know, I'm technically doing a backlog thing, right? That's how I can justify it to myself. No, I, the best no I, don't, I don't think that counts. What do you think, Shane? Backlog is already on the shelf. Ooh, yeah, it's got to be on the shelf. Sorry, you 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 you're both cutting out a bit. <laughs> uh, I'm losing you. <laughs> uh-huh. Remember when uh, Killzone Three they had that collector's edition? You got a helmet as well. Yeah, I don't think oh, yeah, you put yeah. it on, but yeah, that was cooler. I tried yeah, displaying that. Just... Tried putting it out, but the wife's like, "Put that away." Like I just no, no I couldn't ah. even couldn't even put it like near my gaming console <laughs> in my little area. You know, she's like, "Put that creepy helmet away." Never got away with yeah, that. Like, eh, eh. It, it wasn't. It wasn't quite big enough to be a regular size. Like it. It was kind of like a a, a, what, a third a third size or two thirds size of a, the, the actual helmet. So you can never put it on. But they look quite cool. Some of these things. The Halo one was pretty good as well. But um, I think you, if you're going to get these collector's editions, you want to try and pick them up second hand, cheap. You know, don't pay, don't pay full whack for them. Did you see the retired Killzone.com? Yeah. Uh, this, yeah. This is, I think this is like a month ago or whatnot. Yeah, they retired the uh, the domain. And I think it just takes you to a, a Sony site if you try to go to it. So, yeah, too bad. A little somber seeing that. It's gonna, it looks like it's going to be quite some time if we ever see another Killzone game, unfortunately. But. they they, they got to make another Killzone. They can't just retire that IP, yeah. right? So is it, is the, I mean, the website just takes you to Sony, but they still own the domain if it takes you to Sony. Yes. Yeah. So they could put, they could put something else there. 100%. Yeah. 100%. But it's, yeah, it looks probably going to be a while but it'd be a shame if they ended it with uh how um shadow fall kind of went even though shadow fall was a great game and whatnot and there's still people playing i tried to get on there uh just a few weeks ago and played played around and uh yeah definitely showing its age now but, i mean they're doing great things with horizon so keep going you know mm-hmm. nice to have some change Hand it to somebody else keep making horizon zero dawn games and just give somebody else the kill it's a it's a shooter i mean come on other people can make shooters right kills on three uh multiplayer remaster let's go that'd be killer yeah i'd be in for that gearbox the the developer behind one of shane and carl's favorite games borderlands and many others oh, yeah. many others right yeah they were just Bubble. yeah they were just purchased for 1.3 billion dollars by Embracer Group, who is apparently buying up developers, and yeah. ha- and has asked them to make a new IP. Hmm. Yeah. This, so, this, what, wonder, yeah. wonder what happens with with Borderlands. I mean, it's still going strong. From yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. What I, what I can gather, you know, there's, there's a lot of people still enjoying three. This was a bit of a surprise. Like this is uh, they're keeping Randy Pitchford at the head as well, and saying like you know he's kind of pivotal, pivotal for what they're doing. And uh, 
Yeah, but interesting. Like it, it, this company, I think it's THQ or the old THQ Nordic, basically re, rebranded, picking up a load of developers, trying to make themselves a force again. So interesting. Yeah, the, see what see what happens with it. But a new IP could be pretty cool as well. Like I do love my Borderlands, but uh, it'd be nice if they if they do have a a bit of a free reign to to you know, throw something else together. Give us something to play in between Borderlands games. Yeah, exactly. 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 Who's making the next Borderlands then? Because they don't own that IP. They were just the developer. Who would Who would you guys like to to develop the next Borderlands game? Carl, putting you on the spot. Sorry. Yeah, I'll do it. You'll I'll do, do it. it. Nice. Yeah. yeah. It might take me. It might take me. I've got to learn how to do it. I've got to learn how to program and stuff. But you know, I'll get there. I'll get there. It may be a eight uh, bit style platformer. But, right. Yeah, we could do it. You just got to tell people you've been working on it for eight years. Then you yeah, can get away with it. anything. That's it. Announce it now, though. Like, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll get a nice trailer going. You know, and I'll, then, I'll, 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 yes, I'll make a montage of all the other Borderlands games. So, you know, this is Borderlands 4. And then... Uh, the there's movie, online. But... There's <laughs> online, but the world's so big that you probably never, ever run into anybody. Yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> all you need for a trailer these days is a logo, right? So you just Basically. use that. Just use the Borderlands yeah. and draw four next to it. Boop, there we go. All set. PlayStation selling consoles at a loss. This came out of their shareholders meeting. Who cares about these big corporate shareholder meetings until we get little tidbits of information like this? Probably not a surprise, right? I would imagine. I would yeah. guess the Microsoft console is probably at a loss at this point as well. I'm guessing. I have no no factual yeah. information there. Yeah, I think so. But generally, the new consoles are always sold at a loss, aren't they, initially? Sort of first 12, 18 months. Uh, and then production costs and cost of parts gets a bit cheaper and they uh, they end up breaking even. But especially with COVID and everything else, I, I just imagine that the costs of uh, manufacturing and obtaining all the, the, the stuff has is, is just gone through the roof anyway. So it's probably not you know going to be a bit tight for a while. But yeah, not a huge surprise. And they've got deep pockets at the minute. PlayStation 5 still hard to get near you guys. I know here in the US, I... It's when you see someone tweet it and everyone runs to wherever that online sale is and it's gone right away. Seems like it's still really hard to come by. Yeah, for sure over here. A lot of people can't even get a pre-order in. Like it, it's, it's literally, you get a stock alert and it's like, oh, someone might have some PS5s and a minute later they're all gone. So it, it, it's still, I mean, we did think it would kind of be Q2 2021 when you, you know, they might be out in the wild a little bit, but it just seems... Getting one on a, on a shelf in a store, uh, you know, you might be even looking the second half of the year. Yeah, if that even. Yeah, they got to stop announcing when they're going up for sale. Just random drops, and if people are there, they you know get them and get them. But but put I'm putting them up, and oh, they're we're going to have more going on sale at 10 a.m. Eastern or whatever, right? You know, just, just randomly throw them up, you know, yeah, what's the, people get them, people get them. What's the point of that, right? You're going to sell them all. If, if you put yeah. them out on, let's just say Best Buy, for example, puts them out, they have 10,000 to sell. They don't need to tell you a day before because all 10,000 are going to sell once they put it out because the word will get out. Why do they do that? Why do they make it so it's such a clusterfuck, right? Why do they tell you in advance and then crash their websites and people are like arguing and it's just. What is, is that just the extra publicity they get for like a day or two? And what the hell's going on with that? Why do they have to announce it in advance? It is lame. I I think it's it's PR hundred percent. I think that's all it is. Just getting that, getting that clickbait, getting people fired up. Oh, Best Buy, Best Buy's going to have the PS4. Let's go. You know, people get fired up over that. And Oh, well. So you, but you buy more stuff on their website during the time you're waiting. Like, oh, I can't, I can't handle it. Let me buy a Switch game real quick. That'll calm me down. It's it's like the equivalent. I don't know if you you guys had this in the nineties. Used to have foam parties, right? When you used to be in the club, and you know you'd have this countdown time again to release the foam at midnight or one a.m. or whatever, you know. And it'd just be a constant advert, a constant you know tease for it. Shane's frowning at me here. Look, I'm sure some of our listeners would have been to a foam party or two. Foam party, yeah. You know, getting having to have a few beers. You know, they've got the dance music going, and you know. I was in, I was in, everyone's hammered, and then they release a load of foam on the dance floor and everyone gets gets a bit mental. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah you, 
Yeah, he's ringing that. And um, it's, I remember when I was in, uh, I was on holiday once when I was a kid, and I was in Magaluf in uh, in uh, BCM. I think it's a huge nightclub, and they were just doing this thing and counting down to this this release. And you're like, here it comes, here it comes. And all just everyone's get hyped up, hyped up, but they do it for hours and hours and hours beforehand, and everyone just gets whipped into a frenzy. And they do that, and buy more <laughs> drinks, and do this, do that. So like, it's it's a, you know, it's an age old tactic. Did you say foam with an M or right. f- phone like like a phone? Like, you know, like, no, no, foam, suds. foam, not, not ET. Yeah, so, suds. Yeah, suds. Okay. Yeah, it's <laughs> a thing. Yeah. <laughs> Joel's yeah. looking at me like, "What the hell, man?" <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you need a break from the metal, right? And you just have to. Do you bounce off the foam on the? What happened? So they dump a bunch of foam, and then you just get covered in it, or do you like then bounce well, off? Like, uh, much. like soap suds. They just release yeah. a bunch of soap suds, and I, I you know, I was questioning. Carl being to a foam party to begin with. <laughs> but now, you know, I do remember like seeing in like movies and whatnot. They're just, you know, they would open up these things and they would just like dump all this uh, suds. You know, like when you go by like, like the town square where the fountain is and somebody's put a bunch of dish detergent in there and there's foam. That's it. Yeah, exactly. That's it. Pretty much the same effect. Look, you know, don't, don't judge me as, as much Rachel as. Uh, <laughs> Look, all the girls went to these things. So what can I say? Yes, they did. There we go. <laughs> Uh, and you get culture on ABOG, which you know you don't get that many places. True culture. That All right, pretty cultured. Next top, <laughs> next topic here is Carl's Ga- gaming, movies, and I, a, a TV show in there for good measure yeah. as well. Yeah, I just thought this was interesting. We've had a few um, announcements lately with uh, with different, you know video game IPs getting a bit of the Hollywood treatment, you know, and um, you know, gaming, gaming movies have been a thing and TV shows have been a thing for, you know, for a long time. Some of them good, some of them awful, you know, and, and a bit of that kind of cult, cult middle ground, you know, and um, speaking of Borderlands earlier on, you know, they've cast the movie now uh, with, I think they've still got a few more to do, but uh, Jack Black's going to be claptrap got kevin hart in there was roland which is really strange because <laughs> roland's like the big strong hero dude and kevin hart's the opposite of that um as much as i think it's funny uh kate blanchett uh kate blanchett has been cast as uh, lilith and uh jamie lee curtis is uh, Ta- tannis i think um so some cool actors and actresses in there um they're obviously going you know, shane's uh, but you know they, they they're going all out i think you know to to try and make it a, a a decent um decent flick anyway i think i think eli roth is the director i'm not 100 percent sure on that but it, it's definitely gonna have that kind of adult bl- bloody violent kind of theme to it uh, it'd be interesting to see who they cast as tiny tina i think that's going to be the big one everyone's going to look at and be like Ooh. get it get excited for that depending on what they do but it just got me thinking you know they've, they've announced with um that's like a, that sounds like margot robbie margot robbie for that for that role could could be right she's in everything jamie lee curtis kate blanchett jack black that's great kevin hart man go get, get. Man, oh, i love kevin Hart. i can't i can't stand him <laughs> sorry he's like he's some people don't like will ferrell right or or um who's the other one uh i forget his name chad smith Billy Madison, uh, Happy Gilmore. Oh, oh um, Sandler. Yeah, Adam Sandler. Adam Sandler. Yeah. Th- th- those are those those two actors for people that I know are like hit or miss. Either you like them or you hate them. Like, sure. I know a few people who will not watch Will Ferrell movies. Like if Will Ferrell's Fair in enough. it, I'm out. I'm that okay. way with Kevin Hart. Just hmm. I do not find that dude funny. Same, same with Jack Black. Same with Will Smith. I can't stand. Yeah, I'm out. No. I'm out. Will Smith. I know, dude. Oh yeah, Will Smith. Okay. Yeah. No. So probably Wes. probably be a, a no see in this one for <laughs> yeah, me. You, but Jamie Lee Curtis, man. Corner. Jamie Lee Curtis just, doesn't she, that doesn't that pull you in though a little bit? I mean, I'd watch it because Jamie Lee Curtis, and then just mm-hmm. wince at the Kevin Hart parts. <laughs> True, but it's no Halloween, though. No, of course not. But it's Jamie Lee Curtis. She's yeah. a she's a fox. Always yeah, has sure. been. Always will be. And she's married to Christopher Guest, who's like my guy. That's that dude. Yeah, <laughs> that dude's a genius. Yes, hundred percent. I mean, all I say about Jamie Lee Curtis is true lies. Oh my god, she's great. She's great in that movie. Yes, she um, is. Um, so I'll be right back. This is where Shane says he hasn't seen it, and um, they've announced also that uh, they've cast like a Last of Us TV show, you know, on HBO with. Um, 
couple of Game of uh, Game of Thrones guys in there, and, and if you're familiar with the Mandalorian, you know, also uh, Pedro Pascal and Bella Ramsey. Uh, and uh, this follows on again from a few weeks ago, where Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg were confirmed for Uncharted, the movie as well. Can we step Can we step back a second to that Last of Us? Yeah, TV show. Yeah, I was. Didn't they say initially that this is going to be on HBO? But didn't they say mm-hmm. it was good at like a side story? It's not, it's not going to so. be. Yeah. So why the fuck are they casting Joel and Ellie for this? Because I think it, it, thank you. From what they were saying, isn't it going to fill in a bit of the gap between the first and the second game in, in between, I think. And so it, it, I think it just uses them as a reference point. A reference point. Those are big actors and actresses, right? What do you mean? What do you mean sure. by reference point? They're going to, so it's going to be like a, the same it's a different storyline between the two games. I thought it was going to be like different characters, completely separate, like in the universe, but with other people and doing different parts. I was a little surprised to hear they're casting those two characters. It could be, but to, to get interest up in it, and maybe they've, they've, you know, even if the parts are limited, hmm. you know, screen time might not be massive. They, at least they're like, you know, they, they need the names, I suppose, don't they? To kind of attract people to it. But like we've just had there, that, it's, that even that could be polarizing. You know, board, the, the Borderlands one is good, you know, and then with Uncharted as well, there's like some people are like, they don't want Mark Wahlberg as Sully, you know, probably me included. I don't mind Mark Wahlberg at all, but I just think, unless he's playing a really young Sully, uh, it, it seems quite a strange one. I, I don't want to, pl- I don't want to watch The Last of Us TV show if it's replaying parts of the games that I've already played. Yeah. I don't want to, I don't want a live action version of the story that I already know. It has to be something different. Mm-hmm. What are you laughing at, Shane? I can't say it because I'll probably get canceled. So, you think it's going to get canceled? No, I'll, I'll get I'll get canceled. Shane's going to get canceled. You're not going to get yeah. canceled. You're stuck on here. What do you mean you're going to get canceled? Uh, cancel culture. You know, you know how people are nowadays, right? You got to watch what you say. So, say it. I mean, it'd be cool. I guess it'd be a different story. You know, it'd be cool. You're not. You're not. You're not you don't watch any. You don't watch stuff. I don't watch. You stuff. don't watch you're stuff right. and junk unless it's a boxing match, right? Basically, yeah. Oh, yeah, sports is all right. Anyway. Yeah, sports <laughs> is decent, is it? Wow. I mean, and again, this this is just a a quick point, but when you say that, Joel, about not wanting to watch something about the game you already played, I was kind of like that with the Tomb Raider reboot. That you know, that the game's brilliant, the first game, but then they made that movie, they rebooted the movie, and it pretty much follows the plot of the game, and that's one of the reasons why I never watched that movie. I was like, oh, well, I played that, like, and on a and I'm happy with that. Like the, the movie's fine, but every, all the, everything from the trailer I looked at was like, "Oh, okay, this looks exactly like the story that you play in the game." So I didn't really want to watch it. Um, but over the years, chaps, is, has there been any video game movies that you've watched and you've enjoyed, or you know, any guilty pleasures in there, or is it all just like I can't, I'm not, I don't want to watch anything that, that relates to video games? I've tried a few times, and I haven't really liked any of it. I know Halo had a like a DVD or something, a bunch of bunch of shorts that were put together to make i don't even know i tried to like that i like the halo games but it's just wasn't it wasn't that well done so no i can't nothing comes to mind it hasn't really been any good video game movies that but uh like well, just think about the last of us i just enjoyed that experience so much both those games i have such a connection to it and the connection i have to it definitely relates to the fact that i was playing through it that I was making decisions and yeah. I, I was involved. And I just don't want to see that in a, in a TV show because it would just I'll say almost kind of ruin it for me. Like it's like, you know, the analogy maybe is like reading a really good book. You're completely satisfied with the book. Then you hear there's a movie coming out and you're like, no, I don't, I don't want to see someone's interpretation of this book because I've interpreted it my way and I want to remember it my way. And the same is true with like a really good video game. The Last of Us, especially. I don't want to see somebody else's interpretation of it. I want to remember it just as I remember it in my head. 100%. You put the work in, you know, it, it drew all sorts of emotions out. And, you know, that's, I, I felt the exactly the same. A good friend of mine is always sending me links. He's like, oh, see, they're doing the, you know, Uncharted movie. Man, you're going to watch it. You're going to love Assassin's Creed movie. You're going to love this right up here. I'm like, no. It's the experience of playing through it that is why I love it. Not watching, so I don't want to watch something like that, like that at all. So, I, Jill, I'm with you, man, hundred percent. Yeah, if it's a game I don't care about or haven't played, then fine. 
maybe maybe I'll have more interest in it. How about you, Carl? Back at you. What what have uh, what video game movies have you loved or watched or? I mean, I've, I've seen a few over the years, and 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 it, it tends to be. I, I don't know. You you kind of it's a bit inquisitive in it. Like you, you kind of curiosity gets the better of you, and you end up watching some of these things. Like I remember the. Uh, did either of you ever watch the Super Mario Brothers movie with Bob Hoskins in it? That's a, weird, that's a weird movie. <laughs> <laughs> but I think I did see it as a kid. I mean, there's a kid who yeah. saw anything. And the, and the Coop and the Cooper troopers are like six foot four, six foot tall dudes with like shells on the backs. Like it was yes, just just awful, <laughs> just just terrible. But it kind of at the same time was like uh, there's a hint of nostalgia with that. Like I saw the Sonic movie last year, and that was that was really good with Jim Carrey. Um, the a couple of Mortal Kombat movies aren't bad. You've got that that Street Fighter movie as well. You know that oh, was Jean Claude Van Damme. Right. Jean Claude Van Damme, and yeah. And, Raul Julia and Kylie Minogue. <laughs> Wasn't there uh, there's a Pokemon movie that not that long ago too with what's his face from What's His Nuts? Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. That that was pretty good too. Detective Pikachu. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That wasn't bad at all. You've got the, the Resident Evil ones. You know, the, the couple of those are good. So th- there've been there've been some that I've enjoyed over the years, but it just it it it, it seems that they tend to you know tend to stick with the tried and tested franchises. You know, with your Tomb Raiders and Resis and. You know, we've had a couple of Sonic Hills maybe in there as well and stuff like that. So it's interesting that they're picking up a couple of new franchises to kind of do video game movies of, really. So, yeah. Seems to be Hollywood's MO lately. They just kind of re- keep making the same shit over and over again because they're going to put all this money into the production, the filming, and the paying all the actors and actresses. So they want what's closest to a guaranteed success, if you will. They want a guaranteed success if we're going to spend all this money and all the effects and everything. And that's so that so these types of movies are are no brainers in that context. You know, people are going to flock to watch these things. So it's a smart play for for Hollywood to do that. Yep, and pack it full with stars that everybody already knows. People are going to watch it regardless. Yep, make their money back, and if it ends up being good, they'll make more, they'll make a bunch of money off it. Yeah, very true. You know what? Make a good movie though. Yes. Video game developer makes a game about cyber hacking, releases game. Then get cyber hacked. What? That, that'd make that'd make a pretty good movie. That's already so I, that's a true story I'm movie. It. Yeah, true story based on a true story. CD Projekt Red, uh, uh, bless them. Um, they've they've released Cyberpunk twenty seventy seven. It obviously had its issues, all, all sorts of stuff kicked off on about it, and you know they've been working hard trying to fix it. I still think it's a great game, and um, you know they they've come out last week and uh, they've been the victim of a. Of, of a cyber attack you know it, it, it bizarrely the it sounds like there's an uh, uh, an employee an actor um, someone in a bit of an inside job and basically all of their um all of their assets all of the you know the the, the programs the engines the everything that they've used for for games cyberpunk which are three uh, all the assets have been copied and uh, they were held to ransom over them and uh, they just said you know we don't we're not going to deal do what you want, do what you will with it. Uh, they've obviously alerted the authorities and everything else, but rumor has it that those those assets have been sold on the dark web for uh, you know a considerable but considerable amount of money. So it's uh, it, we've got to wait and see what will happen with this because obviously that's big money. If, if you see some games coming out with uh, skins on them, uh, very similar to uh, to their games, it's uh, it's 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 not good for them. And uh, there's a hint of irony in this, and I think some gamers have been a little bit. Uh, enjoying this one but um not not great i think they have said you know uh, the staff's personal information you know games personal information things like that hasn't been uh, obtained but yeah this is this was a bit of a bit, a bit of horrible news i think that's awful what do, you, what do you guys do with your uh with your internet logins and passwords i've been thinking about this a lot lately What's the safest, or what, what's your personal preference for how you manage all of your logins and passwords and protect yourself? I got an email a week or two ago, definitely between the last podcast and this one, from Google that said, hey, our, our, uh, our passwords through the Google uh, website, what do they call that? What's their browser? Chrome. If you, have, if you have passwords saved in the forms of Chrome, we've been hacked. Go change all your passwords. I don't use Chrome except for at work. And at work, I've got our company's credit card, the, our banking website, which has a token, so you can't, can't hack past that. 
Yeah. And then some other stuff like my, my login to ADP, which has my paycheck information in it. So I, I had to go and change all of my passwords. And on my Apple iPhone, I've got notes. So it's an iPhone thing. It's, it's a notes app. And I keep a lot of my passwords in there. And I'm able to password protect them. So if somebody gets my phone, they have to get into my phone, which would be a trick in and in and of itself. But then they have to know the password then to get into the next step of all my passwords. My wife keeps a notebook in a drawer with all the logins, all the passwords. That makes me a little nervous, but might be safer than having them in my phone. My buddy Vince pays for a service, one of these password services that then auto loads a form or something. And, uh, and I use Apple's, uh, Apple's uh, they suggest passwords. So if you, you're setting up a password on a, on a website, they'll suggest one, and then it's like just mega long, goofy with dashes and all sorts of characters. I use that a lot too, and just remember it. But this whole cyber, the cyber, cyber stuff has got me completely like shit and bricks lately. My 401k and all my savings as we get older, and it's just it's, it's a scary world, man, with all this cyber, cyber attack stuff. Just curious if you guys have thought about this. Maybe I'm crazy. I'm probably, well, I am. But if you've thought about passwords and where you kind of, how do you protect yourself? I wouldn't say you're crazy. Yeah. Uh, I, I always tend to I use un, unique and strong. Words. So it's just so many combinations of characters, capitals, lowercase numbers, like it just and nothing at all that's relatable to me or anything. So it, it's going to be something completely random. And um, I set myself a little Dora note, so once a month, and um, the, the, the important ones that, that I'll, I'll rotate those um just pick something new uh, and do that we're very key, keen on this with work so we get a lot of training thrown at us every, every year and like you know you've got to understand um you know even stuff like key logging you know if your wi-fi isn't secured and things like that you know people can pick up your keystrokes drive past your house you know figure out what your password is loads it, it's it's a scary scary world out there so you know uh, some passwords, like it depends on what it's for. Like, you know, I will keep a note of some manually written down. Um, but a lot of them are linked to your email recovery and you've, you've got uh, fingerprint activation and stuff on a lot of your banking apps and things like that. So, you know, you know, generally, you, as long as you've got your phone, you, you know, you're, you're probably all right. And you can reset if you, you know, just go into your bank and things like that. But it's, it's a bit of a mixed bag and there's no right or wrong way of doing it, I think, you know. It's, um, it's it's all down to you. I think the important thing is, like you've done there, Joel, when you get a notification, um, change your password. <laughs> and and if you haven't changed your password or something for a long time, change it regularly. Um, just so you're not, you know, and, and never use the same password for everything. Just never do that. Because <laughs> that's the worst thing you can do. It sounds like using a, using a form, which I use through my Apple computer in the browser. When I go to a website I use often, it'll just autofill my password. That sounds safer than somebody capturing my keystrokes. I never realized that you could drive by and capture keystrokes. So I'm never, I'm never, yeah. I'm never keystroking my passwords. They just auto fill, which makes that makes me feel unsafe. But maybe that's safer because they can capture my keystrokes. Yeah, which a lot, a lot of people who use like a VPN, um, some some you can use like a grid format. So the the either you know the the numbers or the letters that you're putting in are, are remain are always the same, but they're in a different location. In each time that you put your password in, or you have the same location, but those numbers are randomised, or the letters are randomised. So there's depending on the encryption of whatever you're trying to get onto. Um, but yeah, we we have um, a financial crime chap who every now and again comes by and is like, right, this is what people are doing now. You know, this is what people are figuring out from and how to get into your, your your details. It's I've been lucky so far. Touch wood, I've never been um, hacked for anything. There was a Steam hack actually a couple of years ago. I think we might have even mentioned it on the show. And um, ever since then, I never have any payments information stored in anything like Steam, PlayStation, Xbox, Nintendo. Never leave payment information in there, just in case. I had my identity stolen like 15 years ago or so. And I had to go to the police station, file a police report. And it was just, it was really a pain in the ass, kind of a nightmare. And I was protected. I mean, all, everything that happened with like my bank account and my credit card, or, or I, don't, I think it was my check card, they just reversed, you know, they just reversed everything and it was made whole again. But the hassle of it. And I, I felt really invaded. I felt really shitty about it. Like, this sucks, you know? And here we are 15 years later. And it's like, it, the world is that much. I'm sorry. I just took us off on a completely, side tangent here 
Shane, do you pull on Shane? Do you worry about the shit or do you do anything special? Or Shane would be the one that I would think out of the three of us would be like the most like anal retentive about this. Although Carl, with your bank training, you might you might might have him beat. I never actually I've only I'm new to like online banking. I never used until up until a few years ago. I never wanted to get involved in that and so I've uh, I, I got a friend who works in uh cybersecurity and whatnot and he's given me a few tips on, on stuff which I uh abide by and you know just change your password. It's probably the best thing you can do really. But yeah. I'm pretty uh pretty quiet about my uh techniques. Pretty quiet about a lot of stuff actually. But yeah, password <laughs> techniques, yeah. <laughs> oh well. Sorry about the tangent. No, no, that's what we need. Let's talk about what we've been drinking before we get into your impressions of Destruction All Stars, Shane and Carl. Let's let's share what we've been drinking. I will go first this time. I have got a stout. I mentioned at the beginning of the show. It's very cold out. I figured it's it's a stout day. It's a good day for a stout. So I, I picked this up a couple of weeks ago from my my pals over at eighteen forty. I don't know if I've ever mentioned them before. This is Mexican drinking chocolate. Ooh. Very good. It was barrel aged a year. So they put out two ver- two versions of this on the same day. They had the brand new Mexican drinking chocolate. And then they had one that they had barrel aged for a year, which was like twice as expensive. So I only got two bottles of the really good expensive barrel aged for a year and like four bottles of the, the other, the, the new version of it. But today I'm drinking, I pulled out the goodie. I pulled out the barrel aged. And it's a, it's basically a stout with cocoa, Mexican coffee. Mexican vanilla beans, cinnamon, and Mexican chili peppers. Buddy. Ooh. And then barrel aged for a year using our bourbon barrels, by the way. Bourbon barrel aged for a year using our boxing scale for, of heavyweight, lightweight, middleweight. I, this, <laughs> this boy would be a sumo wrestler. Whoa. 12 like point, 40%? 12.3%. Ooh. Proper heavyweight. Yeah. Yeah. Very good color. It's got that nice tint of uh, almost caramel mm. on the top. The sentiment drains down the glass <laughs> there. Very good stout. And uh, I feel like I could go outside without a coat right now. Good stuff. Atta boy. It's your beer jacket right there. Mm-hmm. Nice. I don't have a state, um, but this week I do have another one from... Uh, the guys of Vocation Brewery, and it's a sour. I don't have I don't have many of these on the show, but um, true. The, this is a you can. I love the look of this beer. It's, it's just mental. Um, it's a eight uh, percenter, so it's got some kick to it. It's a sour. Uh, what's it called? Uh, it's I think it's Kavika hops or Kvike hops. Um, yeah, in it there tastes like dirt. Uh, tastes like a dirt flavor to it. I don't know, it has a weird that yeast has a weird flavor to it. Y- yeah, it's got. Yeah, it, it's. It's 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 kind of like a grainy quality to it, and yeah. um, it's it, it's it's good though. Uh, it, it, it's got that in there. It's, it's kind of like you're drinking a bit of a fruit smoothie, and it's got a bit a few bits of the the seeds left in there or whatever. Um, and it's 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 sour and strong. Uh, it's a um, it's it's a basically named after Norway, so it's it's called Rosoya, which is the northernmost island um, in Norway. If you're ever interested in that kind of thing, and um, yeah, it, I couldn't drink more, probably more than one or two of these before. It's um, you're just thinking I want a bit of a change, but yeah, yeah, it's it's for for me like to get enticed into a sour is something completely different than what I'd normally go for anyway. Mm-hmm. So yeah, quite quite a nice little uh, stray from the path for me. Enjoying this one. Yeah, that yeast. Do you guys cilantro? Do you guys like cilantro? Yeah, buddy. Yeah, fifty percent of the of the world apparently has a a, a soap taste associated with cilantro and i'm i'm one of those people every time i have cilantro i get that very soapy flavor so therefore i could just do a tiny bit of cilantro otherwise it's you know i might as well be eating soap for, for swearing from my parents or something as a kid it's, it's bad it's bad that yeast in that you just mentioned carl kvike or whatever it's however it's pronounced yeah it, it tastes like dirt to me it's it, i swear to god it's like that that soap thing with cilantro it's just for some reason that yeast just has this like dirt flavor I've had a few beers that I really like, but every time I see that yeast is in a beer, I'm like, nope. <laughs> Just like if yeah. I see cilantro on a Mexican 
menu. I'm like, nope, I don't want my soapy uh, taco. I'm good. I still think IPAs taste like soap, so. Which is why <laughs> I've chosen to go with a craft stout today. Um, and that's actually what the beer is called, believe it or not, from our good friends. Parallel 49 in beautiful downtown Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. Um, now, interesting story. It's probably not interesting at all, so buckle up. Bought a bunch <laughs> of these. These are uh, nitro uh, stouts. And back in the summer, they were doing a nitro IPA called Space Kitty, and they ended up canceling it because of canning issues because nitro is not really easy to can and stay well. So when they came out with their craft stout, it's like, ooh, you know, this could be good. So I picked some up, had a few, very, very good, silky, smooth, mm. phenomenal stout. Some may say unbelievable. It was actually unbelievable. Very, very good. One of the, easily one of the better, you know, craft brewery stouts I've had. And then I decided, you know, a couple of weeks later, I went and I was put to put a couple more in the fridge, you know, because there's only, you know, let me grabbed a few of them or whatnot. And upon doing so, I kind of tilted one of them, put them in the fridge. And a few seconds later, I heard this. Oh, no. Uh oh. You know how the bottom of the uh, cans are kind of convex? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It went from an innie to an outie. Oh. The whole bottom <laughs> popped right out. And I'm like, oh, crap. That's not good. So I immediately, I'm like, okay, I'm going to open this up so it doesn't, you know, exactly. It's a ticking time bomb. Right. And as soon as I opened it up, just foam went everywhere, all over the kitchen. Yeah. It was nuts. And then I tried another one. And it almost got a little syrupy. It had turned. It is, yeah, not good. So I thought I'd have one of the, I think this is my last one I had. So I decided to have it today. And it's kind of turned, as you've probably noticed that I haven't been sipping on it too much. But, you know, it is what it is. And it's all uh, kind of. Looks done. flat. Looks flat. Yeah. I don't see any bubbles. Yeah. Oh, very, man. Yeah. It's too bad because it was very, very good. So I decided, so I was telling coworkers about this. I'm like, oh, you know, you should email and whatnot. I'm like, actually, you know, that's a good show. You know, I'm sure some other people may have had had an issue or whatnot, but I was shooting email like, hey, just a heads up. You know, I had one of these kind of go on me. Here's some pictures of the can. You know, here's the, the batch number and whatnot. And, you know, they're super, super great. Just email back. Yep. It looks like, you know, we've had a few that have been affected. You know, we've, uh, you know, recalled them all back and taken them back and whatnot. You know, really sorry about that. We'll, uh, We'll send you some uh, some beer out to you. So they sent me a twelve pack of uh, their craft lager. So not a big craft lager guy, but mm. you know, it's it is a good lager. Like it's actually it's got some substance to it. It's not just you know like your typical I don't know like I don't even know what what a name of a lager is. Old Milwaukee. That's they still make that. Yeah, yeah. Old Dusty. Um, so yeah, it's actually it actually is a really nice one, and I've you know kind of shared with you know with some people and whatnot. So it's really really too bad that, that this happened to them. Hopefully they can uh, you know fix that at some point and get it out again because it was it honestly when you had it right away or even, even I'm sure if they have it on tap down at the uh, tasting room and whatnot, I should have one and whatnot because it, it it was superb, very very good beer. But hey, is what it is. So. That's what I'm enjoying today. Oh boy! Well, a craft beer lager, man. I mean, that a good a good lager by a craft brewery is phenomenal, especially in the summer. Man, I yes, I drink the hell out of those. Shane, do you need to go pour something? I mean, I feel bad, right? I, Carl, you feel no. bad? I feel bad. Like he's he's got a, a subpar beer going on. Carl and I have got some really good. <laughs> That's right. I've got like a eighteen dollar beer here. I mean, I'm I'm come on. Do you need a Do you need a fresh pour? Before nah, we before we toast, right. I mean, I'm sure Carl and I can talk about something as you go grab nah, something we'll else. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I, sure, I'm going to finish it. Yeah, good man. All right, I am. It, I'm it, doing it right. It's, it's the last it, one. It's not the beer's fault, right? No, not at all. Not at all. And <laughs> exactly. it's not. And it's not like it's just you know a, uh, you know, it was brewed shitty or anything. It's just an unfortunate side effect of trying to, you know, can can some nitro. You know, it happens. 
Well, let's raise our glasses. I, 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 I'm going to toast uh, spring. I've had it. I'm, I'm ready for yep. I'm ready for the sun to be outside. It's sub zero here. I can't even go for a walk with my dog. My dog is completely pissed off at the moment. He's so confused. <laughs> He's like, "Are we ready?" I can't. It's sub zero. I mean, I, I looked it up on the internet. Don't take your dog in sub zero. Like, fuck. Correct. So his ears would fall off or something. I don't know. Cheers to spring. Cheers, Cheers boys. Let's get into what we've been playing specifically. <laughs> Not our lists. We don't do that. But Destruction All Stars. Shane and Carl both had some time with it. I'm curious yeah. to get their thoughts. I've seen some mixed reviews on the old internet intertubes. Intertubes. S- seen some people complaining about it. Some people say it's great. Others say it's not. We're, what say you, Shane and Carl? What say you? Well, so this this is the game that was teased for the launch of the PS5, and then kind of you know just nudge back a bit. And they were like, okay, let's give this out as a free um, PS Plus exclusive. And um, I've been pleasantly surprised by it, uh, to, to be fair. I've had, I've had a, you know, a, a little go, and me and Shane jumped on. We played some multiplayer. We'll come to it in a minute. Um, it, it's very much like it gives you the, the old Destruction Derby vibes, kind of with a little bit of Rocket League in a bizarre way. Um, there's no ball involved. Uh, you, you kind of you, you have a... A character to pick from that there's there's a good roster i think there's about off the top of my head probably about 16 characters maybe 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 a little bit more and um each of those are unique they've got their own ability uh as, as an individual and then you you grab a car drive your car and um, each, each of those characters also got a an individual car which they can summon when the meter builds up um which has got its own special move and stuff so it, there's kind of a lot of you know characters to play with um a lot of fun to be out in that. And um, the basics of the game are pretty straightforward. So you get in a car, you drive, you bash into all the people, you earn points, and um, you know the points win prizes, basically. You know, the points go up, and um, it's all team-based stuff. There is a solo mode or two. Um, me and Shane, we played a load of the car NATO, or whatever it's called, um, Rick NATO, whatever, whatever it is. It's basically a big tornado in the middle of the arena, and you drive around crashing into the other guys and you pick up gears every time you crash into somebody and then the aim is when you've collected enough or you you've got the balance right between risk and reward and then you drive into that tornado and bank those um points for your team but um gameplay wise it's it's really fun to play you know it's a it's a blast uh just getting in the car driving around crashing it up it's 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 a real casual game not sure about the longevity of it, you know, if they add other modes and refresh it quite, you know, frequently, like a lot of these online games are doing, then it could be pretty good further down the line. But we had a few connectivity issues, didn't we, Shane? You know, we had, we had a couple of couple of teething issues. Yeah. It was very, uh, very difficult. I mean, you were, I mean, you were the... Uh... The MC man trying to get in there and it just it kept failing on me wouldn't wouldn't pull me into into the match and you know it's uh, yeah it definitely got some uh, teething issues yeah um, but there there is there is a lot of potential for this game you know it's you can tell it's really like very infant you can see why it was pushed back you know and it, mm-hmm. it, you know they kind of had to rush to get something out I guess or whatever reason but. I think in about a year's time, when they you know fix uh, fix some of the issues and start adding some more content to it, it, it could be really something because the gameplay at its core is actually a lot of fun. It, it really is. We were we were having a blast. You know, we were, we were chirping. Yeah. You know, all sorts. <laughs> it was it was great, great banter and a lot of fun. Definitely, definitely, just got a little bit of that Rocket League feel. Almost felt a little bit kind of Tony Hawkish, a little bit with it too. Just kind of yeah, with the arcadiness in there. So, yeah, it's it's got a lot of potential. But we'll we'll see what happens. Yeah, I can definitely see like a battle pass kind of system dropping for 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 this. Yeah. You know, unlocking experience and then maybe like skins for the cars or the you know the characters and things like that. So it it does feel like Shane says very it's bare bones. Like you know, it's kind of like it's 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 fine. Like it's pretty. It, it plays well. Like it's 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 a good looking game. In all fairness to it, for for what it is, and um when you're playing it's pretty smooth you know there's there is a bit of the odd bit of lag but the issues we had was mainly connectivity you know trying to get into a game and all of a sudden shane and get disconnected from the party and i'm like i can't it, he was but he was still in my party but he was in the lobby and just stuff like that which they, they'll patch you know um 
But for free, you know, if you've got a PS5, it's a, it's a no-brainer to, to to pick this up while it is free. Uh, in fact, that's the only way you can buy this game in a minute. You know, it's not for sale anyway. I don't think it's literally just um, PS5 exclusive on Plus at the minute. Sorry, Shane, go ahead. Game. Yeah, it's a decent game. Yeah. yeah I, think, I think it might have been a little extra frustrating getting into a match because of the fact that we were having so much fun once you're in there. Yeah. You know? If, and the rounds could have been a little bit longer too, I think. But I mean, they'll, I mean, they they'll, they'll get that balance. They will. It it is fun, very worth worth trying. Hundred percent worth trying. You got that PS Five across it. You know, get on there, try it out. You know, especially if you got a buddy and you can connect. A very basic thing, usually. Right. So yeah, you wish yeah. there were, you wish there were longer matches because you're having a problem connecting. Or just because it just felt like it needed to be longer? Because uh, it was just fun. Like when you're in there, yeah. and we were having a blast. It just felt like sometimes it was a little, especially because we, we hadn't really played. So we were kind of learning the learning the ropes as we went along. You know, and e- each game, you know, you, you takes a little bit to get into it. And you're like, right, I'm just hitting my stride. And then the, 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 the match ends. And then you're struggling to get into another matchmaking scenario. Um, a couple of things like that. So that made it, a bit more frustrating than, than maybe it, it would be, but uh, yeah, it's it's a good little game. Uh, I have enjoyed it. Like we we streamed it as well. Like it, it was good fun. Um, you know, so if you want to if you want to check that out, just nip, nip over to the Twitch channel and um and, and have a little look. And it's 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 definitely going to be a good multiplayer game. Like if you can get a few of you together, you know, having a couple of oh, yeah. a couple of beers, like there's. There's, there's a little skill involved, really. Like, you know, it's just crashing and having fun. So, like, if you, you know, have a few beers, get your mates together, it could be a blast. And that's not at the ABOG Twitch. That's at your personal Twitch. Is that correct? Sorry. Yeah. 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 Okay. It is. Yeah. What's the, uh, what's the, what's your Twitch username so people can check that out? Sure. It, it's twitch.tv slash Stratham. Hey, head over there and you'll, you'll see it as the last broadcast on there. And, uh, yeah, yeah, have a little look. So, if you think you want to join in, you know, jump in there, get, uh, get, get some All Stars action going. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for listening. We appreciate you all. If you'd like to support AVOG, a couple of ways you can do that. If you want to give us a thanks for our content, you can leave us a review. Wherever you listen, you can join us on Discord. We'd love to meet you. We'd love to have some conversation. Speaking of Discord, my wife the other night on our, our friends over at Mojo Menace, the podcast, on their Discord, you may recall from last episode, they, they made me realize that you could play music in discord and do like a radio dj thing and just really cool how that's a feature there now my wife was their first ever dj she had like a a 90 minute radio show where she's playing music talking there's maybe 15 20 people a dozen people i don't know i didn't stare at the number of users but it was a decent group of people in there throughout and then somebody was nice enough sir lag made a playlist on spotify of all the music she played i then copied that into our apple music it was great man that was a really good time. Shay did a great job. Holy crap, that is my, awesome. My wife did an excellent job. But I think that might be something fun to do at, at ABOG. You know, maybe Shay could kick us, kick it off for us, show us the ropes, and then all three of us could take a turn at it. But maybe like a 90-minute session, you can just share music, almost like having your own radio show. Just wondered if anybody would be interested in that. I asked I asked in our Discord. Got a couple people interested. We just have to pick like a good a good time, maybe on an off week off abog week yeah this time frame like a sunday afternoon when we're recording where yeah. we can still get like england and we record at like three o'clock central time in the u.s shane over on the west coast is one o'clock carl you're at nine o'clock yeah nine p.m so maybe, so maybe yeah. whatever yeah. you need basically yeah <laughs> <laughs> maybe that i don't know let us know you can send us an email you can join our discord give us a shout in there we do have an email address, abogpod at gmail.com. Well, that's it, guys. We've got an hour. We've got a great show. Lots of news. Anything else you got to share with the world before we hang it up for the uh, two-week period? Besides silence? Uh, no, there's no pearl of wisdom coming to mind, but change your passwords. There you go. Yes. Do it now. Word. All right, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs> we'll see you in two weeks, like clockwork. Cheers. Cheers. Peace out, Girl Scout. <laughs>